Allah gave this as the conclusive evidence of the truth in the claim of the Messenger The Qur'an is a proof for the Messenger and the Messenger's honesty and character is a proof for the Qur'an, it's vice versa, it's both, both ways. But the advantage Allah gave us before, over the nations before, you see Musa salam, people saw the, the water part. If you were skeptical before then, once you saw it part, you would say, okay, I'm I, I believe. I'm coming, you know. And now two generations later, you tell your grandchildren, you know, I saw the water part. Your children may or may not believe you. And then your grandchildren tell their grandchildren, you know, my great-grandfather saw the water part. Ah, we've heard that story ten times. What happens in stunt Sunday school? You know, the she-camel of Allah. You know, Isa alayhi salam, the blind person. And the kids are going, yeah, I know. The people who saw it, you couldn't shake their iman after that. Right? But the people who hear about it, they say, eh, yeah, okay. Nothing special. Allah blessed this ummah because the Qur'an was not a miracle for the eyes to see. The Qur'an is a miracle for what? The ears to hear, the eyes to read. So the miracle in its integrity as a miracle is retained one generation to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. It's not just something passed down as I saw that amazing thing happen. The amazing thing's right here. Still here. When I was explaining this to my sixth grade Islamic studies class, you know what they said? Oh, Brother Naman, it's not fair. I was like, what's not fair? And one of my students said, all these prophets got such cool stuff. <laughs> we just got a book. <laughs> and you know what? As blasphemous as that sounds, he's on to something. I mean, it's a book sitting in the shelf. We're calling it the greatest miracle of all time. The Christian can turn around and say, hey, Bible's a miracle too. The Bible's a miracle, right? Somebody else, the, the, the Hindu can pick up a copy of the Veda and say, this is a miracle. It's a philosophical miracle, right? The Buddhist can say that. So what makes our claim different? It is the knowledge and appreciation of the Qur'an as a miracle that made the Sahaba thoroughly convinced after every time they heard Qur'an recited, oh my goodness. Imagine, every few hours, you get to stand in front of the water and watch it part. Could you imagine what kind of iman you would have? They're experiencing that miracle every time they stand in salat. They're experiencing something. There's a difference in that iman and our iman. There's a difference. Because they're appreciating it at two levels. is the reminder, as that ultimate spiritual reminder, and at the same time as what else? A miracle. A miracle of Allah. It deserves to be appreciated in both lights. It is critical that we appreciate it in both lights. Because it has a direct impact on how convinced we are, and how we live our lives. There's no, there's no inkling of doubt left. Like there's no inkling of doubt left. Now I want to share with you finally, as a conclusion, inshaAllah ta'ala, what I want to share with you is, well, I agree. What am I supposed to do? That's great. The Qur'an is guidance, the Qur'an is a miracle. What about me? What do I do? You see, there are three kinds of people. And I'm taking this from a great work of tafsir, written by Amin Ahsan Islahi. You should read his introduction of the al Qur'an, those of you who can read Urdu. Those of you who can't read Urdu, uh, the first volume has been translated called Pondering Over the Qur'an. Uh, uh, Pondering Over the Qur'an. Uh, the translator I don't know, but the author is Amin Ahsan Islahi. Amin Ahsan Islahi. So he says there are three kinds of people. Once they acknowledge that the Qur'an is guidance, there are three kinds of believers. The first kind is the one who says, you know, Allah actually is giving me guidance in this book. And if I come across some, guide, some knowledge of this book that is guiding my life in a different direction, I'm going to change myself. I'm going to try to change my life according to the dictates of this guidance. Because you start reciting this Qur'an and learning it and memorizing it and studying it and you start realizing that this Qur'an is offering a lifestyle that's going this way and your lifestyle is going that way. So you've got to start changing some stuff. So the way you speak starts changing. The way you dress starts changing. The way you eat starts changing. The way the kinds of friends you have starts changing. The kind of job you have starts going through change. The kind of money you make starts changing. The interaction you have with your family starts changing. And when this change starts happening, 
the first people to notice are who? Your family. And your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin. They come to you and they say, you're changing, man. Are you okay? I mean, we're all Muslim. You don't have to be that Muslim. Which, you know, are you listening to these mullahs or something? Is that what's happening to you? Take your thing off your face. They'll come to this, the daughter. The father will come to the daughter. Why are you wearing that on your head? You're not going to go out like that, right? This is America. Don't do that. Who's going to marry you looking like that? They're going to take you away looking at your beard. They will say things like that. Your family. They're not going to say these things to you because they hate you, by the way. You know why they're saying those things? Because they love you. And they're scared for you. They think you're becoming crazy. And that's nothing new. Whenever people started turning to their faith, what do their families consider? Insanity as the only possibility. <laughs> and so what happens, especially the young people here, listen up. When you start turning a little bit religious, a little too religious than the rest of your family, or the parents start turning more religious than their kids, when that happens, then those that are not moving at your pace are waiting, patiently waiting, until you get a C on your test. Until one time you snap at your father. And then they'll turn around and say, is this what your Islam teaches you? It is that it's this, all this masjid stuff, that's why you got to see. That's why you failed. All you, you know, so they're waiting for your mistake. To blame what? The religion. And when this is going on, this psychological war that's going on in your home, you walk into your home and it's a war zone. It's a war zone. Your mother, your wife, your, hus you know, your husband, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, whoever they are, they are saying the most hurtful, sarcastic, poisonous things that if anybody else said, you would run them over with your car, but they, you have to take it from them because they're your family, and eventually, young man, 18, 19, 20, you know, you're known to be hot-blooded anyway, so what do you do? You snap. You people are trying to make me follow the forefathers and the culture and... I'm trying to follow the sunnah and you don't even have the right aqidah. Slam the door and walk out. It happens. It certainly does. No, it didn't. <laughs> but I've seen it happen. And even if it did, I wouldn't tell you. So <laughs> but this happens. My family just doesn't understand. And now you start attending halaqat and classes and courses. Not because you want to attend classes and halaqat and courses, because you can't handle what's going on at home, and you just want to be away. Seriously, check yourself. Check yourself. You see, that is the biggest failure of our youth. You have to grow thicker skin. You have to grow thicker skin. You've got to be able to take it. Whatever they dish out, whatever they say, I wish you were never born. Is this why we brought you to Amerika? Right? Whatever they say, it's okay. Smile. Be the best to your parents. Be the best to your parents. Whatever they're doing, they can't be worse off than the father of Ibrahim salam, who's manufacturing shirk products for mass distribution. And he's kicking his son, who's right, out of the house. A lot of times youth tell me, oh man, my parents just don't get it, man. They don't understand. So what if they don't get it? That's not the point. The point is, if you're holding on to this guidance, then you've got to have thick skin. There are people that came before us that were buried alive because they believed. You can't take a, some, some yelling from your parents. You can't take some sarcastic comments from your uncles every eid. Oh, we know what you were like last year. What happened this year, Malvi Sahib? Right? They'll say that. Take it. People before us took a lot worse. Thank Allah we got it easy. Thank Allah, these are not the times where believing is like holding coal. The Messenger warned us about that, right? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 